Hi everybody, we're going to go for a new series of videos where we look at creating animations in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This video will serve as a gentle introduction to what animations are and what to expect in the videos that are to follow. So the way I look at it, the sooner we get done with this, the sooner we can start creating cool things in the code editor and other stuff that you and I are probably looking forward to. So let's get started. So before we get to what animations are and what to expect in the web world, let's take a few steps back. Let's take a look at why do you even care? Why do you even care about animations? Like what is it that makes it so important for me to prioritize and schedule in a project that is probably already booked with all sorts of things that are probably pretty useful, at least to what you and I would perceive. The simple reason is this. Depending on the kind of app you're building, there's a very good chance that users have a high expectation for what it looks like or how it feels as you're using it. And the simple reason is people's expectations are set to a really high bar these days because of the high quality of content they see everywhere around them. I'm just take a look at some examples. You know, when you talk about animations and UIs, we don't have to go very far. You know, I'm not even gonna talk about games or high quality visualizations. I'm talking about just everyday apps you use. For example, I have iTunes. As I'm navigating between albums, for example, notice what happens. Items slide in and out, things fade in, things fade out. It's actually very subtle, but these are all examples of animation. When you go to the web, you see a lot more examples of it. You know, here's Google Maps. I'm panning, zooming, I'm scrolling. I'm doing all sorts of things. Your core operating system, you know, whether you're on Windows or on the Mac, have a lot of animation built into them. So I'm on the Mac right now. The Launchpad is a great example of something where you have a very subtle animation that shows you all the apps you can launch and very simply also just hides into view as you click away from it. And let's not forget about devices. Let's talk about things that aren't just on your desktop, but your mobile devices, your Android devices, your iOS devices. A great example of it is a new app called Paper. I'm gonna hit resume video. Let's just take a look at like how it actually looks as a person is typing in. Look at the interaction, look at the very subtle and fluid movements that basically are nothing more than the animations, the kind of animations that we will look at together on how to build. So let me go and close out of this and then we get back to the slides. So the thing is, animations are important and the way I look at it is, you may not win awards for using animations well because that's what people expect. But if you're not using animations or if you're not using them well, people will notice it. It's something that your average user isn't gonna go, oh wow, the animation's beautiful, I can't wait to use this app. They're gonna use the app because the app solves a particular need. That is the crucial goal of everything you need to build. But how it accomplishes that goal, how it accomplishes that task, that's a more subtle, more subconscious, more psychological level of details and animations fill that particular void very, very nicely. And so now that we've got some of the overview out of the way and you know, hopefully made a good case for why you should care about animations in your apps. Let's talk about what an animation is. You know, look at it from a textbook point of view, an animation is nothing more than a visualization of change, a change of something that occurs over a period of time. And the way I look at it is, you know, I love blue circles, so you're gonna see a lot of examples where I have a blue circle and it's gonna be doing all sorts of animation-y things. So here I have a very simple blue circle and at the bottom you have a start and an end marker. And you'll see what that means in a second. So at the beginning, at the start point, you have a blue circle, it's at the left side of the screen. At the end, the circle has shifted to the right and it is much larger. So start, it's small to the left and it is bigger and to the right. Now what an animation does is find a way to seamlessly make a transition from where you are at this state at the beginning and where you end up at the end. Now if we wanted to magically animate the circle, what you'll see will look something like this if we trace the circle as it is progressing from where it is at the beginning to where it ends up at the end. So notice that as your circle is moving from left to right and getting larger, you see these intermediate states, these intermediate versions of our starting circle as it is getting larger and moving progressively to, to the right. And these states are known as interpolated states. And I'm gonna throw some terminology at you, but don't worry about it too much for now. We'll look into these in much detail much greater detail in subsequent videos, but just be aware that there are you know, some formal definitions that you need to be aware of, not just because that might come up on trivia night at somewhere, but it's because even the code you end up writing, these terms will prove to be very, very important. So the other thing I mentioned is that an animation is a visualization of change over a period of time. 
and that time is specified by the duration. The longer your duration, the longer it'll take your animation to go from, in this case, left to right, small to large. The shorter your duration, the faster your animation will seem. And that's another lever you have to control as you're creating animations. You know, well, not only what gets changed, what gets animated, but also how long it takes as well. And these are things that as you start building animations, you'll become more familiar with and more comfortable tweaking to get the right result that you want. All right. So now let's start, you know, diving into the focus of what we're really here for, which is learn about how to create animations for the web. So in the web, in the browser, there are three kinds of animations that you'll be dealing with and things that you need to be very familiar with as well. The first one is something known as CSS animations. You might also hear it referred to as keyframe animations. The second one is CSS transitions. And the last one is JavaScript animation. So now you've seen the three kind of animations to expect, let's just talk at a very high level what exactly each of these are because outside of the names, I really haven't given you much detail on what to expect. So a CSS animation is something where you define many intermediate points and these intermediate points are known as keyframes. So in this case, I have five keyframes and I define this blue circle in this case to be a little different in each of these keyframes and your browser takes care of interpolating it between all the various intermediate states. So you define your, you know, your five points and everything in the middle to create the animation is automatically handled by a browser. The second kind of animation we talked about was CSS transitions. These are a more common kind of animations you see. This is the kind of animation you see when you hover over a link and you see like an underline that just appears that animates in, or when you click on a button and some UI just flies in as a result of it. Transitions are very common in as a reaction to something, which is why you'll see them all the time in, in UIs. And unlike keyframes, you don't, you don't define any states besides the beginning point and the end point, and your browser takes care of figuring out all the intermediate states. So if you want to create something more elaborate, you really can't really, you know, you can't do it with transitions. And the last kind of animation we talked about is JavaScript animations. And this is the one that it's more free form, more free for all, because you, you write code for every little thing your animation does, even the intermediate states that your browser so nicely handled for you in the CSS world, in the JavaScript world, you had to define all of that yourself. Now that sounds terrifyingly scary, but it's actually not. And we will look into that towards the end after we looked at all the CSS cases. So there you have it, a very quick overview of what animations are and how they relate to the things you'll create in the web and what you'll be seeing in the many videos we'll have directly after this. So if you'd like to learn more, you can always go to coop.com and just look at all the animation courses we have available. If you have any questions, the easiest way is to post on forum.coop.com. Be able to reach me in all sorts of ways at Twitter, at Krupa, on Facebook, or on YouTube. And of course, you'll see a lot more references to this, but if you prefer reading a book instead of reading on the screen or on watching a video, I have a book called Animation, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's available on amazon.com in paperback and Kindle editions. So be sure to check that out as well. And with that, I will see you in the next video.